What H.R. Giger created all those years ago for Ridley Scott's first Alien movie has become a true sci-fi horror legend, at least as far as horror villains are concerned. True horror originates from a concept that was previously unimaginable, and that was the horrifying beauty of xenomorphs. No one thought that they could get impregnated after a creature shoved some nasty fluids into their body through the oral cavity. If you're a regular on Marvelous videos, you'd know that xenomorphs hail from Xenomorph Prime, and that they have the wacky reproductive method in life cycle, and in this video, we will discuss exactly that. We're going to dissect the life cycle and anatomy of the iconic alien species from the Alien franchise. We'll discuss how exactly a xenomorph becomes a xenomorph, and if you're wondering if a xenomorph drone gets naughty with a xenomorph queen to fertilize her, you'll have to wait to the end of the video when I discuss stage 5 of the life cycle. So. Let's get right into it, shall we? Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. A brief overview of a xenomorph's crazy anatomy. The Xenomorph XX-121, commonly referred to as the Xenomorph or Alien, is an extraterrestrial endoparasitoid known for its hive base life cycle. Possibly originating from the faraway planet called Xenomorph Prime, the species is recognized as one of the most dangerous and hostile alien entities ever. Reproduction for xenomorphs involves using a host organism, but of course, we'll dive deep into that in just a bit. The physical characteristics of a xenomorph can vary based on the host where the embryo is implanted. In the case of the human phenotype, these creatures generally stand around 7 to 9 feet tall which is around 2 to 3 meters, and they weigh approximately 181 to 270 kilograms, or roughly 400 to 600 pounds. They possess distinctive features separating them from run-of-the-mill aliens we see in movies and other media. These would include a muscular tail, a large curved head, and an oblong shape. But the credit has to go to H.R. Giger's genius brain that could imagine and enrich Dan O'Bannon's version of the creature. For those of you who don't know, O'Bannon was the writer of Ridley Scott's original movie. Furthermore, xenomorphs exhibit a wide range of different appearances throughout their growth due to differences in life stages. But such differences may also arise because of hives, casts, ages, and hosts. Their remarkable capacity to incorporate genetic material from hosts and the presence of natural or artificial mutations and variations contribute to their remarkable phenotypic diversity. Adult xenomorphs exhibit several shared characteristics, including an invertebrate-like body structure featuring a protective dark exoskeleton. They possess a flexible, elongated tail and a domed head, often with an elongated, toothy mouth. Within this mouth lies a secondary, extendable, proboscis-like inner maw. Notably, xenomorphs consume their sustenance using their inner mouth rather than the outer one. This inner mouth is akin to the pharyngeal jaw of a moray eel. These creatures also produce a corrosive fluid with a dull yellow hue, often referred to as blood. The precise purpose of this fluid remains uncertain, whether it functions as a nutritional conduit within the body or serves primarily as a defensive mechanism. While xenomorphs' corrosive fluids and extraordinary resilience might suggest exotic biochemistry, their inclination to feed on and develop inside humans points to carbon-based biology. The ability to incorporate genetic traits from hosts implies the presence of DNA, or a mechanism to decode and convert DNA into the entity's genetic information storage. The genetic exchange is seemingly mutual evident in Ellen Ripley's cloned offspring created to access the Xenomorph Queen's genetic material. Xenomorphs build hives constructed from a strange resin combined with their saliva fluids. A Xenomorph Queen originates through several different methods, including specialized royal facehuggers or maturation from Praetorians, which can evolve from drones or warriors, a process termed molting. A Xenomorph's capacity to potentially molt and progress into Praetorians and Queens suggests a unisexual reproduction and parthenogenesis, a mode of asexual reproduction present in various species on Earth. But we cannot outrightly negate the possibility that xenomorphs could be hermaphroditic or engage in sequential hermaphroditism, as seen in specific fish and amphibian species. Upon reaching full maturity, a xenomorph gets exceptional physical strength and agility. These creatures are adept at stealth tactics, often preferring to remain dormant until suitable prey approaches. The adult xenomorphs can easily climb walls and ceilings, which is frankly surprising because of how much they weigh. Additionally, they have little to no issues with extreme temperatures, be it an arid planet like Ryushi with multiple suns, or the cold deserts of the Antarctica 
Antarctic. They can swim proficiently, respire in hostile environments, and even endure the vacuum of space to a certain degree. Some can expel acid, potentially originating from their stomachs, throat glands, or specialized acid pouches within their heads, which can be employed for blinding enemies or hosts, similar to a spitting cobra. Given the absence of visible eyes, it's possible that xenomorphs use echolocation akin to bats for spatial perception. Frequent hissing might serve in communication as well, although evidence indicates that they can, in fact, detect light and darkness to some level. Detection of prey could involve electroreception, much like sharks do to detect electromagnetic fields produced by animals. So, even when the prey is immobile, their heartbeats may give them away to the biomechanical monsters. Xenomorph Life Cycle The life cycle of Xenomorph XX121 is an intricate sequence comprising various distinct stages, necessitating a living host organism for the development of the juvenile xenomorph. The process includes the use of hosts, typically resulting in the host demise when the emerging chest burster ruptures through their ribcage. This life cycle, particularly the use of hosts that meet their death in the worst possible manner, is actually a defining feature of the species and remains their most recognizable trait. The Xenomorph Life cycle draws comparisons to certain parasitoidal insects found on Earth, such as the Chalcidoidea and Ichneumonoidea wasp families. These insects lay eggs on live prey, which are eventually consumed by hatching larvae. Parasitoid wasps belong to a diverse group of hymenopteran superfamilies, primarily in the wasp-wasted Apocrita. These insects lay their eggs on or within the bodies of other arthropods. This eventually leads to the demise of the host organisms. Various species of parasitoid wasps specialize in different insect orders as hosts, commonly targeting Lepidoptera. However, some species also select beetles, flies, bugs, and in the case of spider wasps, exclusively targeting spiders for hosts. The tarantula hawk is a solitary black spider wasp with orange wings, about two inches long. It's named for its hunting behavior, preying on burrowing spiders, especially tarantulas. During late summer, these wasps search for burrows to lay eggs on the spiders. While adult tarantula hawks feed on nectar, their offspring need tarantula protein. Female tarantula hawks lure the tarantulas out. The two insects then engage in combat, but the tarantula hawk remains unaffected by the spider's venom, and that's how it survives the battle more often than not. Once the tarantula exposes its belly, the wasp stings and paralyzes the spider to drag it to a burrow. The wasp then lays an egg on the tarantula's abdomen. The hatched larva eats the tarantula from the inside out, saving vital organs for last. A single tarantula hawk can paralyze up to 20 spiders, ensuring a fresh food source for its young. However, the xenomorph cycle is distinct, particularly in how the infant chestburster stage develops. Instead of being implanted as a fetus, the chestburster acts more like a self-assembling growth, using the host's own cells and biological material for construction. This process, known as the DNA reflex, contributes to the variation in the physical attributes of the adult xenomorph. Anyway, the xenomorph life cycle is largely divided into five primary stages. Ovomorph, facehugger, chestburster, adult, and queen. The adult stage can be further categorized into various forms or castes, each with distinct physical characteristics based on age, function, or the genetic makeup of the host organism. But let's dive deeper into it to try to understand how exactly the life cycle of a xenomorph works. Stage 1 The initial phase of the xenomorph's life cycle is called the ovomorph, or egg. These eggs are generated through two primary methods. Either the queen lays them, or through a process known as egg morph. When laid by a queen, these ellipsoidal leathery objects stand between 2 to 3 feet in height and possess a four-lobed opening at the upper end. When a potential host approaches, the lobes of the egg unfurl, revealing a facehugger parasite inside. This facehugger then emerges and attaches itself to the host. Eggs laid by a queen are generally healthier compared to those formed through egg morphing. But what is this process exactly? In the absence of a hive, a lone xenomorph drone captures unsuspecting victims and encases their bodies in a self-produced resin. This resin acts as a catalyst, subjecting the captives to a mixture of mutating enzymes and growth hormones. 
Gradually, the captive's physical form undergoes transformation, adopting the characteristics of an ovomorph. The resin is expelled from the barb of the drone's tail, enveloping the host, leading to the eventual development of an ovomorph containing an active facehugger. This transformation spans approximately 24 to 36 hours, culminating in the formation of the ovomorph, rendering the host's survival unlikely. This process serves as a survival mechanism for drones that lack a hive or queen. While the drone's capacity to produce eggs is less efficient than that of a queen, it serves as a viable solution, potentially giving rise to ovomorphs housing royal facehuggers, thus addressing the absence of a queen in the hive. Stage 2 The facehugger, a distinct stage in the xenomorph life cycle, possesses anatomical features much like those of arthropods, such as arachnids and horseshoe crabs. It has skeletal hands and a spine-like tail, with eight elongated finger-like legs that ensure agility and rapid crawling. These appendages enable the creature to leap significant distances, mirroring arthropod locomotion. A ventral orifice on the facehugger houses a lengthy and powerful proboscis, serving as a conduit for delivering a xenomorph embryo. This structure bears a resemblance to the reproductive tract of a human female. The creature's extended digits offer mobility across surfaces and a secure grip on a host's head during implantation. Despite their spindly appearance, these digits are quite strong, complicating removal attempts and ensuring successful implantation. The tail enhances the grip around the host's neck and is known to constrict potential hosts. Moreover, the facehugger's acidic blood hampers detachment efforts. A proboscis, approximately 50 to 60 centimeters in length, Length, goes into the host's throat for implantation. Proximity to a potential host triggers activation by channeling bioelectric potential from the egg's acidic blood. Thermo-auditory senses, akin to adult xenomorphs, enable facehuggers to track and approach prey strategically. If they don't find anyone to attach themselves to, they can survive independently outside the egg for up to 120 hours or five days. In the event of a host's death before successful implantation, they target the next available living organism nearby. Stage 3 Studies conducted in the comic Cold Forge have elucidated the characteristics of the mutagenic substance introduced by facehuggers. This fluid has a remarkable ability to rapidly unravel genetic material and assimilate biomass from the surroundings. When combined with the necessary genetic blueprint and sufficient nourishment, it can expedite the transformation of a single-celled organism into a fully developed adult creature complete with differentiated organs within a matter of hours. Notably, the substance known as plagiarist prepotens has been identified as the agent responsible for creating chest bursters within host organisms. The underlying process involves intricate molecular and cellular alterations of the host's internal physiology. The intricate molecular reconfiguration leads to the formation of new organic compounds. This includes the disintegration and subsequent recombination of carbon molecules to construct the xenomorph's skeletal structure. Concurrently, hydrogen ions combine with surplus sulfate and nitrate ions, giving rise to sulfuric and nitric acids that constitute the chest chestburster's blood. Due to its gestation within a host, the chestburster assimilates a portion of the host's DNA, usually around 10 to 15 percent. This genetic inheritance accounts for traits such as the presence of Yaucha mandibles in pred aliens or the quadrupedal stance of runner xenomorphs. Gestation periods vary across different hosts, with royal chestbursters requiring the most extended duration to mature. The potency and interactions of the mutagenic substance with other organic components remain areas of ongoing research. Findings from the comic suggest that optimal implantation of the facehugger, scientifically known as Manumala noxhydria, requires a frightened host. Additionally, Dr. Blue Marsalis noted that fear-induced hosts yielded better developed embryos. However, the swift absorption of the mutagenic fluid by the host system renders the impregnation process lethal in many cases. To ensure that no asphyxiation takes place, facehuggers supply hosts with a mixture of breathable gases, ensuring their survival while the gestation process unfolds. Interestingly, aboard the Nostromo, the juvenile alien matured to a height exceeding 7 feet or 2.2 meters by the time the crew encountered it anew. Stage 4 as far as the xenomorph hierarchy is concerned, the drone stands as the prevalent and fundamental variant discovered within the hive. Of course, you can compare the drones with the worker bees in a beehive. The chestburster that erupts out of a host doesn't take a lot of time to evolve into a fully grown drone. It seems like the chestbursters are high on energy when they're born and use all of that energy to mature and develop into an adult. Functioning in the roles of primary assault units and procurers of potential hosts for impregnation, a drone 
drone poses a threat due to its pressurized bloodstream, which upon demise causes it to rupture and release acid, endangering nearby entities. Drones do have slight variations, including both smooth and ridged head configurations, along with other minor distinctions, such as prominent upper forearm blades. Drones can also come in the form of runner xenomorphs and mature predomorphs referred to as stalkers. Stage 5. Praetorians exhibit larger dimensions compared to most other fully developed xenomorphs, approximately twice the size of a drone, but smaller in stature than queens. In instances of expansive hive populations, workers provide warriors with royal jelly until they undergo evolution into Praetorians. These creatures assume the role of guardians for the queen within the hive, and they get their name from the Praetorian Guard of ancient Rome, responsible for protecting the emperor. A distinct feature of Praetorians is the prominent flat crest extending like a crown from the rear of their heads. It's hypothesized that Praetorians might have the capacity to transform into queens in the absence of a queen. Praetorians possess notably concentrated acidic blood and can emit a piercing scream to summon additional drones for support. Runners parallel to Praetorians are referred to as crushers and are sometimes called chargers. Xenomorph queens are widely acknowledged as the apex of the species, but even they have many other xenomorph casts above them, such as the matriarchs and Queen Mother, the supreme leader of all xenomorphs in the universe. Coming back to the Queen, their dimensions surpass basic drones and even Praetorians, standing at around 20 feet in height and measuring 53 feet in length when erect. They possess a distinctive bodily structure featuring two pairs of arms along with a secondary pair on the chest. The Queen's head is larger than other mature xenomorphs and is safeguarded by a crest akin to that of Praetorians, albeit significantly larger. Variations in the shape of the crest exist among Queens. For instance, the queen's feet bear high heel protrusions, setting them apart from other xenomorphs. Egg-laying queens feature an extensive ovipositor located on their lower torso, akin to the enlarged abdomen of certain insect queens. Unlike their insect counterparts, however, xenomorph queens do not appear to require drones for fertilization. While attached to the ovipositor, the queen becomes relatively immobile, sustained by a biomechanical throne comprising a lattice resembling immense insect legs. Stages beyond the queen. Although reports of queens evolving into higher castes remain sporadic, they do have the potential for transformation into empresses or queen mothers. In fact, you should check out our videos on xenomorph secrets. I'll leave you a link down in the description. Marvelous Verdict A seamless fusion of the unimaginable and the terrifying, these creatures have a life cycle that's as captivating as it is horrifying. These creatures are truly nature's perfect killing machines, beings that only wish to survive and procreate, and to do that, they would stop at nothing. Their entire existence is guided by the fact that they want to reproduce and spread through the cosmos, and this is further pronounced in their biological features and abilities. I'm not sure how Marvel is going to deal with xenomorphs, but I only hope that they enrich the lore and give more explanations for a few unanswered questions about how xenomorphs function. But we're more interested in your thoughts. Do you agree with us, or are you of the opinion that the mystery should not be done away with? You know where to leave the comment, but in the meantime, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.